1956, it is presented at the cinemas High Society, a movie by Charles Walters, where the musical interlude is presented by Bing Crosby, one of the most famous American singers of the 20th century. In it, slowly they combine, instrument by instrument, all the elements of jazz. Thus, what seems like an arrhythmic speech in no time transforms into melody, changes of tone, emotions and musicality. However, was the evolution of musicality in humans just as spontaneous? What force could cause the development of such an ability? To understand the emergence of this instinct, it is necessary to go back to the origin of the first human musical instrument, the voice. It is thought that one of the evolutionary causes of the development of the human voice is that it allowed us to recognize the identity of others in the group. Only by listening to the pitch and tone we can distinguish sex, age and identity, among other personal characteristics. Plus, people tend to perceive those with the deepest voice as more powerful. And not only that, while women prefer men with more masculinized voices, in general men, on the contrary, prefer women with more feminized voices. We can assume then that the tone and pitch of the human voice evolve thanks to the competition between men and the selective preference of men and women. So speaking in a deeper voice when you like a girl is instinctive behavior, like feeling the urge to join in a common song. However, some argue that sexual selection works too slowly and inefficiently to have given rise to such complex traits such as musicality. Nearly 40 years after the publication of The Origin of Species, James Mark Baldwin, an American experimental psychologist, proposed a possible answer to this conundrum and unwittingly left a mark on the theoretical foundations of animal behavior. Baldwin helped develop experimental psychology and philosophy by writing books with mind-boggling titles like Genetic Theory of Reality, Darwin and the Humanities, or Evolution, Social and Ethical Interpretation in Mental Development. With his insightful observation on child learning, he spearheaded research in child pedagogy and neurology, influencing psychologists of the stature of Jean Piaget. But his most transcendent legacy were the two articles that he published in 1896 in The American Naturalist, where, in a somewhat arrogant way, he explains, as his title says, a new factor in evolution. The question that Baldwin was trying to answer was, how does learned behavior evolve into inherited instinct? When a new environmental stimulus appears in the environment, animals may respond instinctively or invent a new behavior. Those who invent a new behavior have greater plasticity, so if the behavior is successful, they will survive and reproduce more than those who didn't know how to change. For example, hypothetically speaking, if the humans who dance to their potential partners are much more successful, it is not that the ability to dance is inherited, it is more than the ability to quickly learn to dance is inherited. This inheritance is becoming faster and faster until the time comes when dancing to the partners could become an instinct. Indeed, under the child development perspective that this psychologist had, he was able to explain how an acquired behavior becomes an instinctive trait through natural selection. He called this process of learning and genetic assimilation of a learned trait organic selection. But over time, it was recognized as the Baldwin effect. Let's see a real example. In 1940, Robert Tyron bred two strains of rats, some good at solving mazes and some bad. At first, all the rats behaved in a similar way, but selecting offspring of only fast learners and only slow learners, he managed to create these two strains. At the end, he showed that both groups only differed in the ability to solve mazes, but not in learning any other skill. This demonstrates that what was inherited was the ability to learn a skill, not the skill per se, because the labyrinth always change. Therefore, we can probably assume that advanced cognitive abilities in humans, such as sociability, imitation, morality, language and consciousness, may have evolved in this way. But now, how could the Baldwin effect be related to the origin of musicality? It is clear that our hearing ability is influenced by learning. So, the fact that it is so plastic reveals that it must have developed in an unstable listening environment. This instability could possibly originate the great variety of music around the world. However, human musicality is restricted to certain universal cognitive criteria everywhere. To learn to sing, we don't have to literally copy every sound our instructor makes. We just have to mimic certain acoustic characteristics. So, this approach suggests that certain vocal expressions may have stabilized enough for natural selection to have promoted them as an instinct. Cool, but... 
What factors could have ignited the Baldwin effect in the origin of musicality? The first possibility might have been that those males producing sounds with more complex musical syntax might have attracted more females. Thus, they could signal, in other words, that if I sing better, I am of better quality and carry better genes. If this female preference was stable across generations, the Baldwin effect could transform the acquired behavior of singing with a certain melody, timbre and pitch into an instinct. Secondly, perhaps, learning a certain musical syntax allowed humans to recognize who was part of the group and who was only there to take advantage of the benefits that the group gave them, that is, food and protection. And finally, it may have been that those who learned to sing complex sounds faster survived longer because the songs signaled the strength and cohesion of a group to neighboring tribes. Despite all these hypotheses, the exact process of the development of musicality is still unknown. It may be that the three factors may or may not have come together, but we do believe to be highly probable is that the Baldwin effect participated in the development of this musical instinct. Darwin said, and quote, when we treat of sexual selection, we shall see that primable man, or rather some early progenitor of man, probably first used his voice in producing true musical cadences, that is, in singing, as do some of the given apes of the present day. We may conclude from a widely spread analogy that this power would have been especially exerted during the courtship of the sexes, and would have served as a challenge to rivals. So, if we add to these hypothetical concoctions a few sounds to court females, a pinch of sounds to identify frosters, a teaspoon of sounds to signal the group power, and three cups of the Baldwin effect, again, what before seemed like an arrhythmic speech, in no time will become melodies, changes of tone, emotions, musicality, and jazz. Bye -bye.